Welcome back to Good Morning, Lawland. On Wealth Wednesday, there's nothing more that has enriched our lives than some incredible books. So Haley Waite is in the house. She is a fictional writer. I mean, I like, wow. I don't know how you do that. I'm not going to lie. Like, I think it's like, I don't know how you do that. But tell us a little bit about the journey in becoming an author. Uh, the journey was a long one, honestly. Um, I went to USC and I majored in history and psychology. And I thought I was going to go to law school. I was pre-law and then one night in the middle of the night four in the morning I woke up with this like idea for a book and I just started writing oh you poor thing and I haven't slept right. since yeah, so yeah, right? I would say a book you don't write a book the book writes you pretty much mm -hmm. yeah you don't really yeah. choose it it just right? all of a sudden so tell us about this one so the book is a work of young adult fantasy fiction and it's really a coming of age story but when we first meet our protagonist Scarlett she's grown up in the foster care system she's never really had any semblance of home and she just doesn't really feel like she fits in and even though it's fantasy fiction I think it's really relatable for people because of all of those issues and basically she just keeps having this returning nightmare almost of this door that she just cannot reach and then she finally stumbles upon it in real life and when she goes through it, she's transported into this unknown world of Avalon. She finds out that she's not just a normal 17-year-old girl. She actually has abilities like beyond the wildest scope of her imagination. So in this dreamland, there is no self-doubt, right? Yeah. What is that experience well, like for Scar? Well, it's, it's hard to explain without reading it. As you can see, the book is quite large. But she, the island is self-sustaining and the, like, the plants have powers and the birds play games. And it's just a completely different world. And it's one of those things that she really has to come to terms with when she goes there. It's a completely new and eye-opening experience. Well, which brings us to the comment you made earlier about home, you know? And it's so important that home isn't where you were born or where you grew up. It's where you belong. Can you yeah. speak to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so she, um, she just grows up in the foster care system and she bounces from home to home to home. And she never really has a sense of family or belonging. And when she gets to Avalon, she's 17, but through the friendships she makes, and feeling like she actually belongs, like that truly becomes her home. And she doesn't really find it until she's pretty much an adult. But you had a lot of personal experience with that in working and volunteering with the foster care system. Can yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, my family in San Diego has worked with Promises to Kids um, pretty much my entire life, which works with uh, CASAs and youth advocates. And it's for the foster care system. And it's just something that's always been near and dear to my heart. And I think growing up being around that was really definitely impacted that and that definitely crept its way into the book a little bit. <laughs> Amazing. It, it is really truly inspiring. What did you learn about yourself in the process of writing and releasing the first um, of this trilogy? Oh my God, it's a very loaded question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to down or edit that again. Oh my God. <laughs> that, I can imagine. that was probably one of the hardest parts right. was editing and re editing and re editing. Um, I mean, it, it lost about 100 pages, so it was even longer before. Wow. But I definitely learned a lot. I mean, I learned how to write a book. It's one of those things that's the most common question I get is how do you write a book? I didn't know. I just started and then scrapped and then started again. Yeah. So you really have to have like perseverance and dedication. You have to really want to write the books. There were do many you, times I wanted to feel, stop. you know, from a metaphysical standpoint, we believe that if you believe it's possible, if you can even imagine it, it's possible. Oh, so definitely. how much do you feel like in that vortex of, of non, you know, where there's no self doubt and you have these superpowers and the plants Speak to you, and that really is our true ability, right? I mean, yeah. How do you feel about that now? No, I, I truly believe that everyone has the strength inside of them to do anything they put their mind to. It's just having the courage and the confidence and the tools to utilize that and to kind of unlock it in a way. Mm -hmm. When did you fall in love with writing? Do you remember the first? Oh, my whole life. Your whole life. Even in elementary school, I would stay after school for this after school creative writing program and I would like submit my short stories to magazines and stuff. Yeah. Oh I just never saw it as a viable career. What, path, when did you think or know you could make a living being a writer? Not until maybe five or six years ago, so definitely post-college. Yeah. I didn't think it was a career option. And what, wow. what clicked there? Was there something that clicked? What, did you have an experience that validated your um, writing? Or? It was, I had written a really sloppy first draft of this book and I had like two or three people read it and all three, even with as sloppy as it was, was like, I see the story here and this is amazing. And I was like, 
oh, I can do this. And I actually quit my job and then did this full time. Wow. Congratulations. Thank right? you. Isn't it interesting when you write a book, um, I'm sure there's times where you had, where you're like, this is the most amazing thing. And then oh, the next day you're like, is this just totally, am I just like completely delusional? It's a daily it? struggle. Right. Every other day it's, oh my God, this is the best thing <laughs> I've ever written. And the next day it's, what happened? So what is all, this? <laughs> we say that all the time. Norman Vincent Peale threw his book, The Power of Positive Thinking, in the garbage can and his wife fetched it out and sent it to publishers. You know, and it was a book yeah. on positive thinking, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. It's very right. ironic, you know? but I think that's every writer's struggle right. or any creative person's struggle. So is this going to be a series? Yes, it's book one in a planned series of three. Ooh. I say planned series because things may change, but yes. it is planned to be a trilogy. Well, that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. So tell everyone where they can get the book and when you're releasing it. Um, it's being released on April 8th, so Monday, and on Amazon, that's the easiest way. Yeah. Amazon Prime, it'll show up right at your doorstep. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. Stay tuned, we'll be back tomorrow. Good morning, Wildland.